That's it. I'm selling all my HX Stomp, all my Helix, all my Podgo. I'm selling it all, getting rid of all of it. You want to know why? I'll tell you why. I want more analog warmth and character. I want hands-on interaction with real gear. I want vintage and boutique equipment. I want customization and modding and connection to guitar heritage, exploration of different tonal palettes, and better live performance dynamics. Okay, what's the date today? Oh yeah, April 1st. April Fools, I'm not selling any of this stuff. You know what? I looked up all of the reasons why people would move away from digital modeling and uh, came up with those reasons. And I was thinking every one of those reasons has a point why you should go to modeling. All right, so this isn't just a rant video. I also wanna make it beneficial and valuable for you as you watch it because there are ways we can overcome some of the problems that were listed on this list. First one, analog warmth and character. I mean, I get it. There's, there's nothing that replaces the feeling of plugging directly into an amp while standing in front of it and just hitting a big open chord. I get it, that's awesome. But where I play and most of us play here on the Hey Worship Leader channel, at churches, we normally, if we even have a live amp, it's back somewhere in a box in a room uh, mic'd up. And so that feeling of being in front of an amp just doesn't exist anymore. I mean, if you're at a place where you can do that, great, fantastic. Not most of us. Now, if we're just talking about the warmth of actual real life tubes versus digital modeling, that's not an excuse anymore. These modelers, the Helix, Tonex, uh, the Walrus Audio thing I got over there, they are absolutely killing it. You could never tell in a live mix, whether it was a modeler or a real amp. You just can't. Like it gets you 90, 95% of the way there. And there's some tricks that you can do to make it sound even more warm and analog. And I'm gonna show you one. So if we push home, this is a, a preset from the Expanse Pack. I've been using this one. I named it uh, the event I had to play the other day. Um, going through here, let me show you uh, something that I've been doing that I really love. I've been adding a modulation effect called the Retro Reel to add some of that warmth. I used to use it for other things, and I still would, kind of like a vibey sound, adding a lot of uh, wow and flutter, which I love. That's not what we're gonna do with this block. What we're gonna do is bring up the wow and flutter just a little bit at about two, add a, just a little bit of saturation, put the tape speed at 15, uh, inches per second and the textures at 63 or 6.3, which I think is the stock feel. And this alone, which is a real subtle setting on top of your tone, just it makes it feel, kind of gives it that analog warmth and character. <laughs> So give it a try, check out those settings, try it, warm up your sound with the retro reel. Number two, hands-on interaction. Uh, there's nothing more hands-on than having a modeler. You can literally change anything you want. You probably have more option paralysis than having any kind of hands-on experience with an actual amp. And the way they have these things laid out, it's very intuitive, especially like with the Helix. So for example, I have this uh, dynamic hall I have all my buttons right here. Like literally I can just, it's just like a guitar pedal. I can page over quickly, no hidden features, no double pressing and holding. Uh, everything is just right here. Like an actual, I'm just messing with all of them now. I'm gonna have to make sure I don't save this preset, but hands-on interaction. I don't think, I don't think that's an excuse. Now vintage and boutique equipment. I can understand that having nice real stuff is great, but I've had some uh, boutique equipment and you know what it did? It just sat forever. I had a, you know, a boutique amp, a Tyler HM18 and I literally, it sat for a year cause I never played it. It was awesome. I didn't want to get rid of it, but eventually I was like, I don't need it. And so unless you're like a collector, if you just need good tones on a weekend, don't waste your time with boutique uh, stuff or chasing after vintage stuff. Unless, and like, if you're a collector and you just want it, I get it. I'm not. I mean, that's not a, a bad thing. Go do that. But if if you think you have to have that stuff to get good tone, 
you don't. All right, what's the next one? Number four, customization and modding. Okay, customization. You can't customize anything as much as you can customize a Helix or an HX Stomp or a Pod Go. I mean, I just did a video about snapshots. You can literally tell snapshots to do multiple things, like infinite things at one time. You can have it program all the, like right here, I can just hold it and click. And you see those little white things come up. Wherever I save that on whatever snapshot, it's, it's going to uh, stay there. So I can go to another snapshot, it immediately went back. And then I can make this one go there. And I can make this one super gamey. And then that's just one parameter. I can do infinite parameters, not infinite, but as many parameters as I want within a preset. So as far as customization goes, uh, I think this definitely wins. Number five, and this one's interesting to me, connection to guitar heritage. And I was like, that's maybe a good point, but I'll tell you what, the first time I got the, the first modeling unit ever, which was this one right here, the HX Stomp, which still today, probably my favorite, um, if you have the money, the HX Stomp XL is only $50 more. So when people ask me which one they should which one they should get, I usually suggest the XL if they're gonna want an all-in-one unit, not have to add any extra foot switches. But this piece of gear right here for the amount of money, and it's cheaper than ever, um, this connected me more to guitar, guitar heritage than anything before because I didn't have money to explore pedals that this thing contains. I never had access to modulation effects, like all the different modulation effects. Can you imagine purchasing a bunch of different effects just to test one effect, like one flanger, one phaser, one chorus, and think, oh, I need to try another chorus. Well, you have all the modeling from those effects and much more in these units. So connection to guitar heritage, same thing with like older amps, especially with the tone matching process and the capturing of like Tonex stuff, and what what other, uh, the Quad Cortex, which I don't have any experience yet, maybe in the future, let me know. Should I get a Quad Cortex? Let me know, drop it down in the comments. I have the ACS1 version two over there, love it. Connection to Heritage, uh, I'm more connected now than ever, thank you. Exploration of different tonal palettes, same type of thing. I have so, I could, if I wanna play metal right now, I could just go grab a metal amp. Let's Let's do that, let's do that. <laughs> palettes I think I have plenty thank you live performance dynamics now I get this one because this is probably one of the most asked questions is how do I get my helix hx stomp pod go whatever it is sound good when I play live and I understand because they are a lot of times like I said at the beginning comparing standing in front of an amp to hearing it only through their in-ear monitors or maybe even a wedge monitor, or they just wanna sound good in the house. And sometimes that can be difficult, but here are some tips to sound good when playing live. Number one, dial in with as many monitors as you have available to you. Use studio monitors, use over the ear, you know, in-ear monitors, use over the ear headphone monitors. The best thing you can do is to dial in your tone at the location you're gonna be playing. So if you are a worship leader, guitarist, whatever, go into your church and ask early or stay late and ask the sound engineer if you can um, listen to your tone through the speakers. Everybody wants the same thing. Everybody wants everybody to sound good. Now you might just differ on what sounds good. I understand that, don't get in a fight. Treat your front of house people with respect and they want the same thing you do. Go out there, listen to your tone. Get a wireless system. I got the new X effects uh, wireless system. I am able to go out and listen to what my tone sounds like in the room where I'm gonna be playing. You know what, a lot of times when I'm sitting here inches or feet away from my studio monitors, I hear every little detail of uh, my tone and then I get to that huge room, I'm like, wow, that sounds nothing like it. Uh, I have to dial in way more reverb and delay than I thought I would when I'm just listening to it right here with my headphones or in isolation. In a mix, it changes a lot of stuff. So listen to your stuff in a mix. Listen to it 
in the room where you're gonna be playing and that will I appreciate you watching this video. No, I'm not selling all my stuff. I love the Helix, love the Tonex. Gonna be making more um, content with that real soon. Sorry to stress you out, but April Fool's Day, all in fun. And I hope today's video was valuable for you. So, if you want more tone tips, I have so many. I got a huge playlist of stuff of how to dial in stuff for, for live tones, how to get it to sound good, uh, different types of reverbs and delays and different effects. I have all that on this channel. You can go, uh, make sure you subscribe, go check out that stuff. I also have uh, presets available for you. If you wanna sound good by this weekend or right now, I have my Sunday Ready Pack, which is 10 premium presets that are all very similar with 10 different amps so you can choose like which one sounds best with your guitar, what tone you're after, or even uh, check out the Expanse Pack. Ever-growing collection of presets, you pay once, you get updates for free for life. So go check that out. Um, thank you for watching this video. Happy April. See you in the next one, bye.